to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I knew they were going to hire a demolition contractor to tear it down. Um, I haven't spoke with Laura since then. So I don't know. I thought she was going to be here this evening. I know the mom is having surgery tomorrow, so I don't think she gets out much anyway with her health, but um, I thought Laura would be here. Did they give you a timeline on demolition? <coughs> Now, I don't know if you've ever spoke to Mrs. Sager, but um, she's very emotional about this whole ordeal. Yeah, I um, know. Yeah. So, I probably had an hour conversation with her last time, so. I don't know if they've hired someone. I, don't, I mean, that was the last I knew. Um, it was a big number, from what I heard. They have it. It was, it was. But it was an even bigger number. They have it brought up to code. It was 18.5, I think, for demo and 124 for repairs. Yeah. So, no. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot. So, the conversation I had was leaning towards the demolition, mm -hmm. but haven't heard whether they're going to work with it or not. No, and after our last meeting, I know they did speak with Jackson's because I did talk to. Bev Jackson about it. They hadn't signed any contracts or anything, but um, I know they spoke with them. That was the 18.5 quote. Anything, gentlemen? There's not a lot we can do until we get some more information. We need a little bit of input from, from the owner as to what they're doing. Yeah. Do you plan on reaching out to her and saying, you know, the council really needs some more information? I can. Um, I said I thought they would be here tonight, at least Laura. Um, yeah, I can. I have her number. I can send her a letter just to have it in writing. I probably so. Um, I guess it's up. Um, what do you guys just want me to tell her? We need the next meeting. She needs to present more information, or she presents it to me, and I can just forward it on. Or well, I think we need to know what what the plan is, what the timeline is, because we can't just leave this. Because you know, it's on the agenda because it was an issue. Right. And they said last I recall they had they were going to de demo, and I thought I can't remember if they said they had someone or they were still taking bids. I think she said they were still. Yeah, so we need to 
that I think we need to see a signed contract before we take, I mean, otherwise we have to take action. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah I, I agree with what you're saying. I mean, uh, we, we can't uh, forget the fact that it's brought to our attention by a neighbor who's afraid it's going to fall in on their property, you know, their situation. So, so you're asking Heather to reach out. Please. Yeah, I can do that. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, yep. I just have one more quick thing so you guys have a full plate tonight. But um, the new business is going uptown, uh, the mustard seed, uh, right there on the corner of 6th and Main. I, I talked to her about the signs because it's a historical downtown, and she sent me back that the creator is a metal artist, and the words will be made from scrap welded metal objects like bike chains, hinges, washers, and screws, and the letters will be tastefully welded onto a background of a light neutral tone. I told her I'd bring that to your attention if she needs to bring that to you guys because she's in the historical downtown if you're going to be okay with the letters being made out of the recycled. Is there any drawings? Yeah, there you go. Is she in with no, it's just something she's envisioned, um, but she didn't want to go any further unless she knew she could, could be able to use it. But I just talked to her last week, so I told her I would ask you guys about it. And if she needs to come in front of you guys with a drawing, I would let her know. But in the past, everything that's been a variance of what is in the ordinance has came to council for, for approval. So I would recommend that that continue for mm -hmm. you guys to approve it officially if you're going to yeah. make a variance. It's kind of what I thought. She said. Yeah, drawings yeah. would be helpful. Very much. I did email her this morning and ask her for some, but I haven't heard back, so before I came tonight. Okay, so I'll just have her get with Shada and get on the agenda whenever she's ready for it. I know she wants to open soon. And, and as you all well know, if we get to the point where we're pushing the envelope and you go outside that border of the historical corridor, then there are grant opportunities that you're not going to be available to go after. Namely, okra. I'll let her know that too. Boy, you've got all sorts of missions out of this tonight, haven't you? <laughs> nope, that's okay. By the way, you do a good job. Thank you. Sir, I sure appreciate you being around. Thank you. A good job. Anything else? That's it. And I'm going to skirt out you. of here. I live in town, so I don't need to know about the golf carts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, Heather. Bye. <laughs> she does do a great job. Okay. Uh, update on proposed yard waste and leak pickup ordinance modification. We met. Um, we, we had our first meeting. We are scheduled to meet on the 18th. Um, again, we've asked. I've asked Dwayne to join us. He's going to join us, and then we were thinking about reaching out to some our local contractors as well get input. This is, I mean, we're not, we're just taking our time. We want to get, digest every aspect of this so we can come up, come away with something that's palatable to both sides. And we have plenty of time before leaves start falling, so I think. Well, I don't know, there's piles <laughs> out there right now. I just blow those in the neighborhood. <laughs> okay. Uh, golf cart committee update with letter and proposed ordinance for review. Uh, Mark, were you the coordinator yeah, uh, yeah. of the committee? I, I think I drew the short straw. Um, yeah. Am I okay doing it from here, or do you need to go? Yeah, you identify yourself. I think you'll pick it up. I need you to come up here in the center and do it for <laughs> 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 yeah, me. Mark McCall, I'm a member of the uh, golf cart committee. Um, the committee uh, met multiple times to, to discuss this and come up with a potential recommendation um, for the council. Um, we've included in your packets a letter along with the framework of a potential ordinance. Um, part, the members of the committee um, were City Councilman John Garrett and Marty Smith, uh, Police Chief Schatz, City Attorney Andy Perkins, myself, Lisa Reppett and Catherine Knoll. Um, during our meetings, we discussed um, really the benefits, the challenges, um, went back and forth 
Uh, we took a look at neighboring communities ordinances that have them um, and really wanted to uh, come up with a, uh, a solid framework of a proposed ordinance if the council decides to approve um, the usage of golf carts in the city. As a committee, we did not come to um, an agreement. We were divided um, as a group. So you're not going to have a, a recommendation, yay or nay, from us. We, we looked at the scope of um, our, our task to really consider all of the pros and cons and to come up with a, an ordinance if you decide to move forward. Um, everybody from what you see in that ordinance <coughs> had inputs on the ordinance. So everybody that was part of the group had a voice in, in what you see in front of you. If you have any questions, we have a handful of the members of the committee here. I know Marty wasn't able to attend. Catherine, for the record, I would just add one simple thing. I think it was the consensus of the committee that we wanted to bring it for a vote so that the community could know how the city council truly felt. Um, and I think that was the consensus that we want the city council to take a vote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's enough public out, you know, outcry from both sides that I think it'd be good for the council to consider this and. and take a stand and from that point forward the thing that we've discussed was enforce whatever's decided you know if there's a golf cart ordinance that's passed make sure it's everything in it's enforced if there's not one passed then you know i think we agree that 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 then that needs to be enforced as well and lisa you were a member of the committee yes i was Something and bad. with what um, was just being said, it, it really was looking at whether you were for it or against it. If there was a proposal that went to a vote, what was in the best interest of the community for the city council to determine what, if they would want it or not? And that's the things that we outlined. As a group, we did not want to have our opinions put upon the city council saying yes we wanted it or no we did not it was this was the research that we found throughout the state and this is the proposal that we felt would be the best proposal to go forward to the city council attorney perkins you were in that uh, i was anything to add? i don't think i have anything to add i think they've uh, they've encapsulated it and uh, um, Chief Shots, you were in that committee. Yeah, I, I would reiterate what Mark said. I mean, whether whether or not we were for it or against it. I mean, I think I made my my, my I think I made it clear that I was against it. Um, if we were going to present something to the council for consideration, it needed to be the best that we could come up with, um, looking at all aspects of it, safety and where they can and can't. Um, yeah, I think, and I, and I think what Catherine mentioned rings true. You know, a vote from the council, because it's been brought up in the past. I, I believe the mayor appointed me to this committee because I was on the city council when it was brought up a couple times. And it was never brought up for a vote. It was, we're going to maintain the status quo, which is currently no carts in the city. So I think a vote would put this issue to bed one way or the other. So I noticed in the proposed ordinance, it has the registration line with the police department. Mm -hmm. What does that mean for us as far as, I mean, we have to hire someone to handle? Is, do you have the staff to handle this as it is now? Can we do it? Yeah, we can do it. Is it going to be a burden? Sure it is. Um, and there's going to be some growing pains with it too. I mean, if, if we were to, if the count, look, make the mistake, it doesn't matter what my opinion is. We'll do, we will do whatever the council decides. So I want to make that very clear. I'm, I'm not trying to work against anyone. Um, if the council decides to pass something, you know, we're going to have to order um, the registration stickers, and I would assume we would want new ones every year so that when they renew them, we know they're in compliance. Um, we're going to have to do 
I don't want to call them safety inspections because I'm not a safety specialist. I, I don't know what makes it safe and what doesn't. I would say um, that it meets the criteria that we laid out in the ordinance. Uh, we would have to physically inspect those um, every year to make sure they're in compliance with the ordinance. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of lot to work out and, and figure out. Um, and then just the enforcement aspect of it also. We did, Chief, also say that it would be done up here, the carts would be brought here, or would we go on? We site? talked about that. Um, about it, it depends. Though. It depends. I mean, if you know, we if someone has a VIN check, needs a VIN check on their on their vehicle at, at their house, we we'll go to their house and do it. Um, could we go to their house? Maybe, um, but it's not something. I mean, if, if we're backed up on calls, it's not going to take priority, and, and it might be where you know. We have one officer in charge of golf cart inspections, and you can only get them done without that officer working. Um, some things I thought about. And I, with this being new to us, I mean, I'm sure it's going to change over time. If it were to get passed, um, it would be an evolution and try to figure out what's best and what works and what doesn't. Um, but yeah, ideally, I mean, they could bring them up here and get inspected. And, yeah, we'll see. Do, do you guys have an estimate on how many carts you should stage in town? Uh, I, I don't know. Is there any way around that? Mind around that. Could be 10 to 15, could be 200. It just depends on interest from people out, well, out of the lake and in town. Well, then you have to, but you have to get to how many carts are, are actually running around now. Uh, and then compared to the carts that will have, sure that will have all the added. safety, the seat belts, mm -hmm. the lights, the turn signals, that will have all the criteria on the, on there to be able to drive around in the areas where they are allowed to drive. Have you all had a chance to dig into the, uh, the ordinance that was proposed? Glance through it. Yeah, I mean, I looked through it, and I know one concern was minors um, driving on the streets, but that's addressed because this states that it has to be a licensed driver. Um, the other, I guess the other question that pops to my mind is, how does this differ? I mean, I know how it differs from, but um, a horse and buggy. I mean, it's a slow moving vehicle as well. You're not going to license that. We don't require insurance on that. How does it How does it compare? I mean, because I would think we would have the same same issues there. But I couldn't even tell you how many we have in town. I know we don't see them out. Big the old big R every now and then. The horse and buggies. Yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't. I think it's a horse-drawn vehicle, so I don't. I, I don't even think it's a vehicle. Uh, it's an animal-drawn carriage. I think. So it's, it's not a vehicle. It doesn't. Doesn't have the same qualifications, I don't think. But wouldn't that present some of the same issues that we would have? With this is actually a vehicle, um, the, the motor-driven vehicle that we can, we can set the standards how we how we want. That's the best protective we want. I think my primary concern would be safety. Absolutely. <coughs> We already have a lot of issues with motorcycles just because it's a smaller profile. Sure. Not as visible. And, and that's that's where I'm coming from. My my whole objection to them is a safety standpoint. Um, they're inherently less safe than a vehicle. They're not they're not designed. When they're just because they're permitted to be on the roads doesn't mean they're designed to be on the roads. Mm -hmm. um, and especially you know around the lakes is a hot topic. But every every spring and summer, we get complaints of speeding vehicles uh, on both sides of the lake, Wolf Point, um, Bessemer Park, Country Club, and now you throw slow moving slow moving vehicles in um, with inexperienced drivers sometimes that think it's safer because it's fun. Um, I think it's a, I think we are inviting problems that we don't have now. The kind of concern. 
yeah, I, yeah, I just think fundamentally they're un, they're unsafe. To, for, for operation on the roadway. That's my concern. I, I agree that it might be a concern to safety. Uh, reading through the ordinance, and correct me if I'm wrong, is there something in there that prohibits them from being on Main Street? Main Street's pretty busy. They can't be on the state highway. There's a state statute that they can't be on the state highway. So 9th Street, Main Street, south of 9th Street, they, they couldn't. They can only cross uh, perpendicular to. They can't travel down Main Street or 9th Street where the state highway applies. Oh, the state highway starts at 9th Street. Uh, right. They can be down, running up and down. They can't, yeah. Down north of 9th Street, it's not a state highway. So they could be downtown. That's uh, that that like a <laughs> business 31 or old 31. No, the no, okay. only state roads that, that, the only state highways that go through town are 9th Street and Main Street. Okay. The other thing I noted in this, this ordinance, just in my going through it, you mentioned motorcycles. Motorcycles have to have a light on all the time. They're on the, there exactly. wasn't anything regarding that the light being that's, on all the time. Yeah, that's what I want. I think, is there something in there about a flag? Do we have that or we have a flag. Yeah, flag, um, slow moving vehicle placard. Slow moving vehicle placard, right. and then does it have the lights for after dark? Right. That's right from the urban lights that I saw. Because most golf carts don't have headlights, do <clears> they? <throat> yeah. 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 That would be a concern, too, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of these topics were discussed in our committee. I mean, it was, it was a good discussion both ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I echo with the one he's saying. It was a really good committee. We might have all had different opinions, but everybody put their kind of opinion aside and really looked at what was in the best interest of an ordinance. It wasn't us voting on the ordinance. It was comparing it to our county ordinance that allows golf carts. What does it have in it? And making sure it's aligned. Because people are going to, over on 6th Street, over there, are going to come in and out of city and county. Well, does it mirror each other or is there differences? So it's just that was a key part of working as that committee. But the committee overall worked really well, even with differences of opinion. Everyone set it aside. I would just include in that that the, yeah, what was good for the ordinance, but what this group has to remember is they have to decide what's good for Rochester overall. Yes. Yeah, and this ordinance is nearly a suggestion. So, like any ordinance that's presented to the council or created by the council, it's your ordinance. So, add, remove, alter, as you see fit. But this was the result of our meetings. Okay, I think you were asking for at least a straw vote as to where the council <clears throat> sits on the issue. Um, in lieu of having the finished ordinance, uh, I would suggest a straw a straw vote. Anybody? Could I ask a few questions? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> With the uh, current ordinance that we have now, can, how? Because the, the safety thing, I I get. We don't yeah. have an ordinance right now. Yeah. We don't have one. It's state law that they're illegal unless you pass an ordinance allowing them. Okay. So, is there any statistics that we have? That we, how many golf carts have we pulled over for unsafe behavior? A handful. If we see them out, we're going to stop them, tell them. I know um, last fall I seen one out, stopped them, said, hey, look, you know, you, you can't drive these on the road. It's educational. It, now, if it's a repeat offender, then we'll start writing tickets, but we kind of handle it with kid gloves. Uh, we don't ignore it, um, but we ask him. And I don't, I don't think we've written any tickets. What's but the, what would be the fine structure as it exists? It would be court, whatever the court imposes, because it's a state statute. So it would be written under state, state law, 
um, and go through the clerk's office. So at court costs right now, probably $150 plus fine, at least, 180 I don't know now. <coughs> and it would be the same thing as a traffic ticket. Was most of those, was, any, was there a common theme? Was it youth? Was it people hanging off the back? Was it alcohol? No, I wouldn't say common theme. Okay, all, all the above? Probably. Okay. Yeah. I know I've stopped three people. Or I've stopped golf carts three times over the past year and a half, two years. Um, one was an older gentleman, uh, one, and two were younger kids. Uh, the, the one younger kid, there were probably four kids on the golf cart. Um, I would say under 16 years, years old. Um, uh, I don't remember how old the third one was, but okay. uh, I think. Go ahead. No, you're, that's fine. Uh, my, my concern is, well, my concern is that we'll see more of that if we allow that. Is there anybody want to speak about successful communities that have these that you feel like is a success story having golf carts well, i kind of rehashed this at the last meeting kathy nolligan for the record but i mean there are i think over 130 communities and counties in the state of indiana that have successful golf cart ordinances and um the research seems to indicate i think everybody does have different opinions on this that it's a very positive thing for the communities and the ordinance actually pro promotes the safety because if you don't have the ordinance, as he stated, he had three golf carts pulled over. The ordinance says, okay, you can't do this. We want you to use the golf carts, but you can't have children that aren't licensed operating the vehicle. You have to have the safety equipment so that you're more visible. You have to have the flag. You have to have the placard. So you're making something that's already happening much more safe for the community. But like we talked about, the state law says you can't have them on the road now, and there's still plenty of people that do that. So I understand what you're saying. We try to pass the best ordinance we can, but just because we pass something doesn't mean people will follow it. Um, I looked up a statistic. There's approximately 15,000 uh, golf cart crashes in DUIs a year, and that number exponentially rises as more communities allow them. So that was part of what I was talking about. Is that statewide or? No, that, I think that's in the country. Um, um, that was part of the, what I was talking about. I think we're asking, we're inviting problems that we don't have now, is my concern. Uh, Bob, if I may, I actually, when this started, had done some research through my connections throughout the state with my colleagues. I received a mixed bag. I forwarded all of any email that I got, I forwarded to the council so I can go back through, since you're new to this, I can go back through and forward you all of those. Um, I think it was kind of a mixed bag. There were several communities that have them that said if they had it to do over, they would not do it again. Um, and several of them that said it was successful. Uh, some of our neighboring communities that have it, my colleagues have told me um, they, in their community, it's okay, it works. Do they have challenges? Yep. But they would not recommend it for Rochester because of the way we're laid out. That's just communications with uh, other clerk treasurers that manage, help manage some of these, plus their police departments. But I'm happy to forward those over to you um, as I did the rest of the council members so you have those. Michelle, did they specify why their layout was more appropriate for that as opposed to ours? Just the way that our, we're split up with the state roads and the way that we have, you know, the lake is on the east side and then our downtown area, our streets for the most part can be challenging with parked cars because we have a lot of street parking and a lot of visibility. And I know that was one of the things, you know, your kids on bikes and I, I actually had a community member just catch me out at the grocery store and, and she said, you know, I have trouble with not hitting the kids on their um, hoverboards because they aren't on the sidewalk, they're in the street. And she goes, I can't tell you how many times I've almost hit one of those and how do we manage that? Like we do, you know, it's kind of like a bicycle. Um, but she, you know, she just expressed concerns, same thing you guys, everybody's already talked about with the safety concerns. Uh, but that was more, they understood how our layout was and they just, they didn't think it would be conducive because of the way they're more structured. And geographically, the, the east side of the lake is at a, a much greater disadvantage 
uh, because the only way they could get their golf carts in town, they can't take them down 9th Street. Or State Route 14, the only way they could legally get them into town would be go down 400 to Fort Wayne Road and then bring Fort Wayne Road all the way in. And I don't think many people probably want to do that just to run to the gas station. And I guess that's what I'm struggling with somewhat when I'm trying to think about this. Is I think that side of the lake is probably primarily going to stay on that side of the lake. I don't think they're going to try to come downtown. I think the uh, the ones on the west side are going to try to go to the B&K for the most part. Maybe Dairy Queen, they might try to cross. Uh, but I don't, I, I don't see that being a three or four mile I don't see people doing that, I guess, or I can't vision it. And, and I know we're not a culvert, and I don't expect us to have the same issues that Culver has, and I know they've had issues. I look at Winnemac, who they, they have it, and they seem, I mean, they're a community similar size. They don't have a lake in the middle, they got a river, they got a nice park around the river that they can go down to and cruise to, and uh, downtown, and they seem to get along fine with it. And, it, and I wouldn't say there's an abundance of them either. I, uh, but that's just one community. But I also, it seems to add to, uh, I, I never see myself owning one and having one for my family, but it does seem to add a lot to the community and, uh, and, and uh, I want to say more vibrant or enhances for some. But it, it's, Safety is a concern, and I get that. Safety is a huge concern. I mean, that's certainly on everybody's mind. I uh, spoke to a couple of the folks from WRLI last night, or Shelbyville, they come up here. Shelbyville just went through this. They, uh, two months ago, had it brought to the city council, same thing, and the chief of police was very adamant. He said, I will go on record that this is bad business safety purposes. I want to go on the record. Uh, their council tabled it. I'm not sure where it's headed. They've got kind of an awkward situation <coughs> for golf carts with their, how their cities laid out and such. But, but safety is the big issue. Mm -hmm. Council was, was, there, one? was there any input from the, uh, the school system? Mm -hmm. If you're licensed driver, it's at 16, so juniors and seniors might be driving themselves or parents and grandparents driving their kids to the school. Or in the schools, really. It's a possibility. We talked about it. So you, you did talk? Uh, we we talked about it as a group. For the school, about whether or not they would allow that. That's a good point. School may have an opinion as well. No, I wasn't here right. You know, I read every one of the um, things that came to us from, mm -hmm. from other communities. And one thing that they didn't really talk about is how it affected commerce. You know, I own two restaurants. So, so the way I kind of look at this is how is it going to affect business in 10 years or 15 years? Because does that once again make our lake a place that people want to buy and, and come to? Or are they going to, you know, in a few years when we're now the minority because everybody else is passing it, you know, what, how is that going to affect us as a, as a community and people wanting to move here? Because that's, that's pretty much what <coughs> code the it's all for is for the people that are here for the summertime that really want to enjoy Rochester as a whole and you know so you pull a few more people over and you make a little more money off of tickets because now you've got something to ticket them to buy so and every community has said that we don't, I, we don't you know, generate we don't generate revenue from writing tickets it's like three dollars and, and I think that's bad practice to try to generate revenue from the Well, no, business. but just it, it, it would be inevitable. You know, sure. I mean, you know, you know, mom and dad don't come up all the time with the kids, and the kids decide to always break the law. You know, you, know, you can't control everything. 
So, so it's going to be inevitable that, that there will be a little bit there. Mm -hmm. And right now, the way I've heard things is the people that are living over there by the Elks on that side of the lake, they want to drive their, their golf cart to the Elks so that they can ride their golf cart <coughs> on the, on the um, golf, course. golf course. That's illegal because I'm eight, eight houses down. Technically. Te absolutely. So that doesn't even sound fun if I was a golfer and was deciding to buy a house, buy a golf cart course and a lake and something we have so as a community why not benefit from it in 10 or 15 years not today but in 10 or 15 years people will want to move here my concern um, is that we're I don't want to say favor favoring but we're, well, kind of favoring the late people to sacrifice the rest of the town and, and I don't we didn't want to create a, a, <coughs> create a line between the haves and the have-nots that's why we didn't want to separate this geographically like if you're around the lake you can but if you're in town you're not and I, 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 my fear is that we would be making we would be passing ordinances that would almost strictly benefit late people and not the rest of the town and, and my concern is how that how that would resonate with the rest of the community. Originally, when we, when we started talking about this at the meetings, we were just talking about the lake. And I said, whew, we've got people, you know, on the other side of town, and maybe, you know, we say, okay, you guys, yeah, it's fine. And on the other side of town, I, I've got a golf cart. I'd like to drive over to the tennis court or something. You know, I'd like to drive over to the city park. Uh, I said, we, we can't just say, okay, now it's just fine, that it's all around the lake is wonderful. It's got to be, I said, it's got to be the city. And when we all agreed, it's got to be the city or, or nothing at all because of the fact that, as the chief said, we can't just turn our heads on part of our community. But I think I saw that you were trying to address some of that with uh, parking and some of the rules that <coughs> keep them. I think addressing some of that. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that was part of the discussion or how that. Guess what? Uh, quality of life. That's what that was. That was the terms I was trying to come up with. Mm -hmm. but, and we all, as far as safety goes, I mean that's a concern. But every time I, I jump on a bike and put my bike helmet on and try to ride on the, I ride on the city streets and around. I mean I'm, I'm accepting risk. And some of you may say that I've already had too much risk and fell off too many times. <laughs> in my head, but, uh, that's that's part of it too, and that that's a fine line. And I, I tend to I guess I'm leaning towards more let the, let the individual decide what they're what we're doing. Uh, I also have questions about if we if we went forward too is why are we an annual inspection and I get the safety but my gosh we don't we don't inspect cars anymore we inspected them 30 years ago if they don't have the stuff and you can't see it then okay you got a ticket they're fine that's an option that's one option I think Culver did away with the inspections and when they get their annual registration sticker they give them the rules and say it's your responsibility to comply with these rules it's an option because it I, I, I don't want to try to create a headache. It may become one, and, that, and if it does, then I, I would like to address, have another chance to address it again. Uh, I realize it's not foolproof, but uh, I guess that's where I'm sitting, <coughs> Mayor and President. Uh, and let me be clear, I'm, I'm just expressing my opinion from a police officer standpoint, and from speaking to the other officers in our department. Um, we will do whatever the council decides know that, that we'll, we'll, whatever the council decides, we'll support it. About the, the cost, the registration fee, it's $100 or nothing. That seems pretty light for what's your, the bureaucracy you're going to have to <coughs> impose. 
it's more than some, but less than others, as far as community, other communities. And I, I, if I may, one other thing as I'm reading through this that came, that I thought of is, somebody, one of you asked about Main Street, and something, as you're considering this, two things, just because I have been in other communities, Winnemac is successful because they don't have the Main Street like we have. Their streets are much wider than our streets. And they don't have, I mean, they have street parking, but a lot they don't have, compared to ours, they don't have the tightness. There's streets that Tom can't even get a fire engine down. Um, but to consider whether you change or restrict the type of traffic that comes through downtown, if you allow this on Main Street, you know, do you, we have to restrict the type of traffic? Do we have to reduce the speed limit? Or do you restrict golf carts from going? I'm thinking of the backing up out of, I wouldn't, I, I, I say here and tell you, I probably would, would hit one, and I have a backup camera on my Tahoe. And I could just see accidentally hitting a golf cart just no different than I would a bicycle or something like that. So just something else to think about. My, my concerns with yeah. the street, big time. Yeah. I mean, you hitting one, backing out of a parking space is different than one of Jason's semis running over one coming through town because they have not, a lot of those yeah and, and some of those guys they get moving i know we have no speed limit but some of those trucks move pretty quick and they don't stop on a dime especially if they're loaded and as long as we allow semis coming down main street i think you open the door for some some serious injuries just something to consider well, it's not just main street it's the jefferson for one way but yeah you've got vehicles parked on both sides of the street and if you're crossing Jefferson and you've got a golf cart coming down the road. You might not be looking for a orange flag, which is something else that we consider. Our two busiest thoroughfares in Rochester is Main Street and 4th Street. Uh, and he's not wrong. Jefferson and 4th Street are pretty busy too, because people avoid Main Street and take the one ways. Mr. Richards has a question in the back. In the shadows. I have a question. A riding lawnmower, as long as they have the, the farm triangle sign, could be driven on the road, correct? And that's, in my opinion, we compare it with a, a motorcycle, which motorcycles go fast. I think if we compare them, we're going to compare them to a riding lawnmower. In the past three years, how many accidents has been that you, the police department or fire department went to for somebody hitting a riding lawnmower. Because I drive mine on the street with a triangle sign. I'm just curious. None that I know of. Okay. But I think there's a lot less of those. But on my side, I live on 10th Street, Leaf Central. I drive my rider lawnmower because I have the vehicle sign in back. And when we compare it, I mean, everything is a risk. You know, I mean, a bicycle to me is more dangerous than a golf cart. <clears throat> A kid walking is more dangerous than a golf cart. You know, and everybody accepts risk, but the riding lawnmowers, if we've never had an accident with riding lawnmowers and they're even smaller than a golf cart, I mean, realistically, I, I see four or five any given week during mowing season in my neighborhood. So if they've never been hit and we don't have any statistics at all that a rider lawnmower has been hit by a car, and we're worried about the golf carts, and I understand there, there's a concern, but I seen a semi overturned on the way home out on Old 31, or Old 31 and 31. Well, there's a lot more concerns, in my opinion, than golf carts. Everything's a risk. say yes definitely we're doing it um, I think a no is a no but we would look at this and take the suggestions and craft it to what we would we would want to see and then it would come to a vote so it's still you know at that point 
could still fail or move forward. Mm -hmm. So the question would be, how many are in favor of moving forward and crafting a finalized ordinance? To vote for real. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> a show of hands in favor of moving forward. I don't have a problem moving forward with the ordinance that put officially before us. Okay. So that was one, two, three, 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 and three. And three. In your short one. Call Marty. <laughs> Call Marty. <laughs> I don't think you'd catch him there now. <laughs> understand safety is the biggest concern and I, I understand the convenience so I mean it's that's why I don't have uh, an issue crafting something and, and having more time to think about it I mean, our time's running out because it's getting to be that season um, well I, I got I got to tell you guys this wouldn't even be here right now if my neighbor hadn't almost run over me with a golf cart when I was going to the mailbox I said we're gonna take this to the council this is crazy. You're driving all over the place. You take it to the council. So here we are. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know that there's a rush. If you want to wait till you have a full council. Well, that's about that's the only thing we yeah. can do, isn't it? Yeah. I move we take a look until next week. Second. Second. Seconds of those in favor. All right. Okay. Is that <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Postpone until next meeting. Okay. Um, um, to that though, we want to take a look at these suggestions and kind of cut it up before then. Or? Well, that. Get your get your own opinions. So how do we need to do that? Do we need an executive or do we need a committee? Is there somebody we can well yeah, it is probably be good to have a group like a committee hash out details of what the ordinance might look like based on this and other suggestions. Well rather than the it's gonna be all of you that say it's all and it's already, it's already, it's already something that's drawn up to be proposed. So what we need to, what we need everybody to do is at the next meeting, we come back right back to the season, read it all over again. What we have, you're going to find, yeah, look things up if you want, look things up, and then we can make our vote whether we move forward. And if we move forward, we have something that we can say, go, okay, it, it can roll. If we take nay, then we don't. Because it's already there. We've, there's been quite a, put, quite a bit of work, and I wanted to thank everybody that did sit in, because we all did get along very well, I felt. And, and we've, there's a lot of work involved in this, and I don't think we should say, okay, well, let's put this over in file 13 and start again, start anew. No, yeah. Let's no, use what, we just, let's use what we've got yeah. our hands on this. I just, I just don't want to come back next month and be right here where we are. We've not done any more work on it. There's something. Well, I don't know if, it's, if it's everybody's gone through it. Has everybody really well, gone, gone through it and read it and thought, okay, what would I change? That's the main thing. Do you have it on the piece of paper in front of you and say, what would I change? If we say, okay, we're moving forward, then we can say, okay, these are the changes. We can say, Andy, can we do these changes? Is that possible, Andy? Sure. Thank you very much. Okay, sound like the plan. I'm getting to see why it was postponed in Shelby, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, I don't want to keep strolling it out. Yeah. No. Should no. We, do you want to have a special meeting in a couple weeks? Or are we okay with Can they meet in executive session? Uh, final version of it. No. You, you got a special meeting for it, and it's a special meeting for special purposes meeting. of you know refining the draft, and but it's, it has to be a public meeting. Does anyone oppose? Yeah. 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 Ye
proposed to meet in two weeks. Tuesday is the month, which is the formal council meeting night anyway. The 11th? The 11th. You're free on the 11th? I don't have the honor yet, but I've got a different amount of calendar. I'll have you back. <coughs> what time? Six. Okay. Okay. Six o'clock. Is that everybody else? I got to go here. Six o'clock. I'm here. Did you hear that? Just the you were in charge of that, not me. Yeah. <laughs> they said the mayor. Five o'clock and pizza? Yep, you're okay. in charge of pizza. Now there's the first there's the first one out of the mayor's promotion. Wait. You want five o'clock? Five o'clock pizza. Killing me small. What's that? We're going with five here. But I think the guy who suggested pizza needs to bring the pizza. <laughs> You gotta bring it up for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice slice, right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You work for food. I guess it. All right. Thank you. And and I would concur at what you just said. Uh, thank you to the committee. Uh, I think uh, what you meant uh, three times. Is that about right? Twice. Twice? Three. 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 three times? Yeah, that's three. Okay. That's, yeah, three times out of your... Don't minimize your sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for your... Maybe. Okay. Uh, new business. Fights for veterans. And Marty's not here, but it looks like we have a gentleman here. I have something to say too because Marty, I uh, know, brought that up. And I, okay. talk, I talked to Mr. Pickburn, Steve, and we discussed this. Uh, it's the fact that y'all have seen this on the front page of the paper. Uh, and it is for the VFW, the Legion, tell me when I'm wrong, uh, money for uh, uh, flags that are put in markers that are put on our veterans' graves. And as of uh, six years ago, uh, the county was funding us all, funding it all until like six years ago. I believe is that right, Steve? I'm sure on the day, but yeah. They okay, and the county was funding it all, and then all of a sudden, boom, they're not funding any of it anymore. So now, Legion VFW donations is up to uh, coming up with the money for the flags, which for replacements and stuff, we're talking about maybe four to five, maybe five thousand dollars per year. Yeah, okay. Okay. In that, that's a little on the high side, but about where we're at. Uh, the county has committed some money. I'm going to let Steve take this in a minute. Just what I'm saying is I was hoping that the city could uh, don't make a commitment, uh, say, over the next five years to, say, donate uh, $2,500 per year uh, and give it to the Legion. Uh, and the to Legion VFW, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, and, and, and let for, their, uh, for the flags and the markers. County's already committed right at 2,500. Okay. For flags, and that that's about covers the flags. And then we always go through a lot of these a year because they get run over by mowers or swipe because of the aluminum. And so if we get just 200 of them, which is kind of bare minimum to replace that, that we got a quote on that $1,137 for 200 of these, which that's kind of probably low. We usually more use more of them. But idea that's like this year and like the flag right at 2500 this year that we the legion and the two BMWs already ordered. Mm -hmm. so the county's taking it they've already committed to take care of that. I just wonder if you guys want to help out with anything like that would that would be be great you know we'd be grateful for all that it all helps. Done. Sorry. Oh my God. I already went there. Uh, Steve, could I can I see one of the great markers right here? The, they used to be bronze, but I those don't last anymore because no. my father's was stolen also. They they, they, they steal the dunk until they made a bronze. I, I wanted to make that point. You're right. You can't put a bronze one out on the grave because 
because they steal. Yeah, that's what they do. It is pitiful. Yeah. And I apologize, Steve, you, what is your last name? Fishburne. Steve Fishburne. Thank you. And you're with the Legion? I'm on the city council, but I'm here actually representing the VFW of the Legion. County council. County, County, County council. council. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you're representing the, both of the V and the Legion? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Tijuana VFW and the Rochester V and the uh, Rochester Legion. They don't work together, but the flags out, trying to keep the markers in place so we need them. These two look nice. Shana, mm -hmm. what kind of funding availability do we have? Um, I mean, twenty five hundred dollars. We can we can find that in our budget. Would it would it be something? John's suggestion of a five year commitment. Would it be something we can? Uh, with twenty five hundred dollars in now and then make it a line item for the yes. next budget. I will yeah, I actually added it. I've actually got a list for budget session this year of these commitments so that we can make sure we get everything itemized that you guys want to keep because we keep getting asked for commitments. This one was I've already added to the list. I just needed an amount. But yes, we can we can pull up this year's budget and uh, then commit it for for the next however long you guys want. So moved. Um, I got, sorry, I, I'm not throwing the water on it. I already moved. I already made a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll Got a motion to, uh, what's your motion? <laughs> that we uh, pull 2500 this year. Make it a line. Make it a line. Uh, moving forward. Second. Okay. Those in favor? <laughs> Are you failing for it? No, I said it. Who seconded? Well, no, I said it, the question. I just wanted to. Talk, I should have known. I said, didn't want to throw water on it, rain on it, but are we limited to finding things that are in the city? I'm fully in favor of the effort for it, but are we limited if something is outside the city limits? I, I think our veterans organization, uh, the VFW and the American Legion, are in so the city. In the city. But it would be a donation to them, and then yes. what do they do with it? It's up to them. Yes. Okay, well, so we just do all the basics. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that, that, county, that's all my issue. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, thank you both for your service. I didn't know you served as well. You served a couple. Well, you you weren't a veteran. No, no but you're very active in the Try it, in the Legion. And, uh, I do have that's one more stuff. item, though. I do. I will need a letter from one of the organizations uh, for the uh, request for the payment, so I can put it with our claims. So I don't know who who do I need to. I chat spoke with. to I spoke to Jean about it already. Jean Maynard. Is it yeah. Jean? Do I, so just go through Jean. Uh, or you tell me. Uh, Jean's uh, process would be uh, brought back into the Legion and uh, Bruce Baker's uh, Kiwana mm -hmm. so, uh, commander. Who, who would you suggest take the letter to Beckman or uh, Maynard's or? Which Probably one? the Rock. I mean, yeah, the Rochester Legion. They do more cemeteries than the other two. But they do around twenty-three hundred. Yeah, they do, they do a bunch. The V does around a thousand, and uh, the Rochester V does. Or you know, you want to be does about five to six hundred every year. So the, the Legion has Gene, right? Maybe. No, Beckman. 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 One other thing. I just wanted to reaffirm that when we discussed the ARP monies, when we got that money coming in, we had made a, a plan on how we were going to spend that money. And I just want to make sure that the council is um, 
okay with <laughs> if we need to modify that plan to cover any expenses at Apache Drive or the infrastructure out there because we're extending that road. So there's going to be water, sewer, stormwater, which is all applicable under for the ARP spending plan. And I just wanted to reaffirm that the council is okay if we need to reallocate because originally we were going to allocate those monies for make the stormwater project on Main Street. Main Street. No. That we had to table that due to funding. So if we need to reallocate those monies for that Apache Drive, that the council is okay with that. To refresh your memory on the Main Street project, when we uh, went out for bids on that, it came back twice what the engineering estimate was. And of course, that was in the middle of the COVID heyday. So we have tabled it. It still needs to be done. We still have the plan. Uh, the uh, NDOT folks have said, you know, we can't say we put you over here in a different queue, but we will remember. You come back to us for a minute. We'll remember it. Um, we plan on taking a look at that uh, before the end of the year again and see what it is. Uh, the Apache Drive project, we've uh, put the uh, uh, project out for bid. We've advertised for bids. The uh, engineering firm for that is USI. And uh, this is going to be interesting, testing the water. They, uh, you know, all these engineering firms, when they put these things together, they put a, a, a contingent number, uh, 10 or 15 percent, higher than what they believe it will actually be to do it, and uh, see what comes in and where it is. So we, uh, we put that out. We'll be looking to see how many bits we get, and what it looks like, and then see whether the temperature of the COVID world has changed and they're coming back down to earth. They're telling us that, yeah, they're seeing construction folks coming back to reality somewhat. So that's going on right now. Uh, the other uh, project situation that uh, folks have been part of in our redevelopment commission who meets tomorrow morning, 8.30. <laughs> Tomorrow uh, we are um, we are closing on the Calhoun property that gets us takes us around the wetlands that BNR and their infamous wisdom designed it to go right through, and then said, "Good luck on figuring that out." So we have we figured it out, and we will be buying a piece of property, a little patch that will take us around. So that will be moving forward. So those things are all going on, but Shada is, what you point out with the uh, ARP funds, is that we would like to redirect those towards the Apache Drive situation. And the wastewater, the other wastewater project uh, possibility that we would need is to finish our digester lid. Digester lid. We've got yep. a uh, digester lid, our second digester lid that we need to have recoded and redone to match the first one that we did within the original project. And that was an additional cost that we weren't expecting. So that might be another redirection to bring to, so that way that it's already, we don't have to bring in and stage the, um, the, uh, uh, the crane, the crane Again. a second time, which is additional cost to bring that crane in and out to pull that. How much does that weigh? Oh, it's huge. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and I mean, this uh, crane is huge. Kind of like you see um, in the cities with the skyscrapers. It's really yeah. kind of neat to watch it. Yeah. But anyway, so I just wanted to verify that the council is okay with redirecting those funds for those projects as we move forward if we need to reallocate that. Just, just to let you know the, uh, the, the business at hand when we're going through that stuff, uh, we come up with these problems and we try to solve them. And the two problems were the digest relates. Big cement, huge things that have deteriorated. Uh, a brand new digester lid was $686,000 a piece. We sat down and uh, Marcus was involved in this and we brought the people in who have been instrumental in coding uh, like uh, stormwater entrance uh, fixtures. And it's very hard coding and we talked to him about coding our old digester. Hmm. It's an interesting concept. They did it, for one. 
it's perfect, it's working great, cost us 186000 So now we're going to do the second one and save a ton of money. So that's work, working the, the program. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought I included the, I thought I included it in here, the original resolution 7-2022, and I'm flipping through, apparently I missed it, it's laying on my desk. So I can, if the council needs, I can re-forward that to you. Well, Bob wouldn't have it, but I can re-forward that to you so you can review it for the ARP spending plan. And then I can consult <coughs> with Andy if we need to actually, if we've covered it as far as making these shifts and we just need to document it in the minutes, you know, then we're okay. Or if we need to bring that back and have it actually <coughs> modified or amended, I should say, since it's a resolution. So I just need some guidance on what direction you guys would like to go. I mean, if you have any issues with those projects, the money's being utilized for those projects or not. Because any comments? The Fed's restricted us anyway, so. <laughs> We're good. We need to do it. We do. We do. Correct. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's still in the same category as the Fed's. Correct. You know, yeah. I, I, and no matter how we spend it, whether we do it at Apache or we do it out of the wastewater treatment plant, it follows their guidelines. Yeah, these ARPA funds are, are interesting, as, as Scott has mentioned. It's going to be federal audit to make sure you're handling these things properly and you're doing what you need to do. Or I'm happy to just send it all back, too. Well, I, just know, saying, you, I know you I'm are. I'm throwing it out there. I know <laughs> you are, but I, I keep trying to convince you. Just, you know, you go through the one federal audit and they say thumbs up. Yeah. You know, then it's it's going to be okay for the second yeah. audit, you know. Yeah. You're just going to. No, uh, it, is, it is a bureaucratic headache, and I know she's working hard with it. But uh, feds are giving out that money, and if we can utilize it, that's just another piece of the puzzle we put together. Uh, but they are, it's the same with the ready grant. Those are ARPA funds. And we've gone through what the expectations are going to be. Shadow's department is going to handle that, even though it's a common project for county and city. <clears throat> uh, the monies will go through the city, uh, and there'll be another federal audit. So they are, they're very, very prestigious on the reports. If you're giving that money out to somebody, there's a quarterly report requirement that has to come back. And if you go to that file and it's empty, you're probably going to be in trouble. So, you're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. So, if you have a motion, yeah. No, I don't need a motion, just a direction. Just to make sure. If we need to modify, I'll double check with Andy if we need to modify it, and then I can bring it back to you if we need any modifications. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead and give me a motion. Yeah. After what you just said, I'm like, wait a minute, the report. Yeah. So I got a one from Goodman. Two, Two seconds. I'll oh, second. Okay, those in favor. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going down to uh, resolutions. We've got resolution 02 2023, uh, establishment of the CCD rate. Um, Shada, would you like to uh, explain that as well? Sure. This was, uh, we had our public hearing at the last council meeting, and what this is is the actual resolution reestablishing our rate from 0 .038 to up to, back up to 0 .05. And Councilman Goodman, would you like me to just read it? Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Resolution 2, 2023, reestablishing the Cumulative Capital Development Fund under Indiana Code 36-9-15.5. Be it resolved by the City of Rochester Common Council of Fulton County, Indiana, now a need now exists for the reestablishment of the Cumulative Capital Development Fund for the following purpose. For all purposes as set out in IC 36-9-15.5. Be it further resolved that the council will adhere to the provisions of Indiana Code 36915. The proposed fund will not exceed 0 .05 cents uh, on each 100 of assessed valuation. Said tax rate will be levied beginning with the taxes for 2023 payable 2024. Be it further resolved that a certified copy of the resolution shall be submitted to the Department of Local Government Finance of the State of Indiana as provided by law. The tax rate for this fund is subject to certification by the Department of Local Government Finance. Okay. 
Do I have so, a motion uh, regarding resolution 02 2023? Seconds it. Those in favor of uh, resolution 02 2023 and unanimous. Thank you. Now, I will tell you as well to follow up, this still has to go through a remonstrance period. So, what I will do now is I have to send over a notice to the county auditor as well as to the uh, newspaper to have everything published. There's a 30 day remonstrance period. And then, so it's not completely final yet. We still have, I believe, two more meetings since I went back to my notes before it's completely final. So, um, but that's okay. the next step. Okay. Uh, okay. Moving on down to department reports. Fire Chief Butler. Good evening. For the month of February, auto fire alarms, one in the city, one in Rochester Township, structure fire, one in Newcastle Township, brush fires, one in Richland Township, mutual aid fires, one in Aubie, one in Mentone, two in Henry Township, accidents, two in Richland Township, medical assist, 18 in the city, 10 in Rochester Township, three in Richland Township, lift assist, three in the city, one in Richland Township, gas leaks, two in the city, animal rescues, one in the city, service calls, Three in the city, canceled calls, three in the city, one to Henry Township and one to Rochester Township. Should total 55 calls and we conducted one drill. Uh, we had six applicants, uh, one withdrew because of age and we'll be testing April 8th uh, for the uh, vacancy that we have. So, so that's, that process is moving forward. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. Anybody have any questions for the chief? Um, the chief was out of town, so he wasn't uh, able to participate in our meeting on the uh, 17th with the Lutheran folks. We met uh, Marvin Davis sitting <coughs> with me, and we met with uh, Jeff Cesar, uh, VP of Operations for the Lutheran, uh, Kathy Kupka, she's uh, another VP. And then Lynn Marin, who's the uh, CEO of uh, Kosciuszko County Hospital, who, who is in charge of the functioning of the ambulance around these areas, and where they go, and how they're, how they're stationed. And our discussion was the ambulance situation for the county. Uh, we're concerned deeply because Rochester Township is the biggest user of the ambulance service. So uh, at, the, uh, at the agreement of the uh, uh, consultants, the Ritter Group, uh, we should open these discussions up just to get the information. What we found out was uh, Lutheran has taken some, some raps on their part uh, from us. They really, really did not want to leave anybody in the lurch. That's certainly not their intent. They just want people to understand they're losing buckets of money. And uh, they're going to be very interested in seeing what the Ritter folks come up with as far as uh, the minimum coverage that we take to cover the county. Um, there's some thoughts already on how many ambulances are needed, but it, it's a big cost. Uh, they've already tipped their hand a little bit by telling the Akron folks that to put an ambulance back in Akron would be $800,000 a year. And the Ritter folks have told us they haven't been involved in any contracts in the state that were less than a million dollars a bus. So, you know, it's a big number. It's a big number, it's a big concern. Lutheran's been doing this now for several years without any skin in the game from us, city or county, they've been doing it specifically to make it on the business, period. But they, they, uh, they are very interested in continuing a relationship here, uh, but it's gonna take some investment. I asked them point blank, I said, are you looking to be made whole? Or are you just wanting some skin in the game to help absorb the bucket of blood that you're really losing? And they wouldn't comment one way or the other. So I, I believe getting down the road when the uh, 
Ritter folks bring back their information. I believe there's some room for discussion there. Um, the Ritter folks, we've met with them a couple of times here at City Hall, and, and you know, their opinion is, uh, and, and they're gonna bring all sorts of things back, but their opinion of Lutheran is, you know, okay, Lutheran's a, a top-notch operation. They've been doing a good job for you. You got a good relationship with the fire station. Everything's looked pretty good there. Geez, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You know, be sure and get all the discussions in your plan. Because uh, anybody else you bring in from the outside, you know, save a few thousand here and there, they're still going to invent the wheel, have to reinvent the wheel. So anyway, we had a good chat. It was uh, a meeting uh, where we get to know the people now. And so we're going to continue to be involved in that because, like I said, Rochester has a huge interest. So that was that. Chief uh, Schaus, you want to take the floor? Sure. For the month of February, we had 18 accidents. Uh, we issued 71 warnings, 51 total offenses, 41 case reports, 470 calls for service, 25 lockouts, seven towed vehicles, and 18 people incarcerated. And then you have the crimes that those people were lodged for. Other than that, uh, Catherine Dively is our newest hire, uh, and she has been accepted into the academy, and she starts the academy May 1st. Actually going a little early, isn't she? Uh, we had her enrolled, but what, when we enrolled her, it was our, already full, so she was on a wait list. Okay. Uh, they must have increased the class size because we got notice, uh, notified last week that she was her status had been changed to enrolled. So that kind of put us behind the eight ball on getting some equipment. And, Academy clothing for her, but we scrambled and managed, and she goes to the academy in, in May and graduates in August. Nice. Very good. Very good. And she is going to go on one day. She's, she's all about being a police officer, isn't she? Yeah, she better be. She doesn't have a choice right now. <laughs> <laughs> she's in it to win it. In it to win it. We're going to drag her along. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Chief. Anything else, Chief? No. Okay. Any questions for the Chief? Thank you. Okay, don't, we don't have any of the superintendents back there in the back. They all have things that were on the screen for tonight. Okay, uh, committee reports. Uh, no one's here from, I don't see Harry Webb, so downtown partnership. Uh, don't see David Heidi. Uh, Ruth, Area Planning Commission. It was canceled, <laughs> but... <laughs> Have you been to one of those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are easy to go to because it's 7 p.m. Ah, I know yeah. what's going to happen in my restaurant, okay. I said. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Heather had said that some, uh, she's had some questions about um, houses made out of uh, um, compartment cars, you know, the... Oh, the train cars? Yeah, yeah. Container. Yeah. container. Container, so the rigid. And she was wondering if, she, if it would be worth putting it on the table to talk about, and I, my opinion was yes. Um, you know, she felt like she might have said no right away because you, we can't have those anyway, um, you know, sitting around and you know, on people's lands and just for the convenience of them. But I said, well, a container house would be totally different than just a container that's holding your, your stuff instead of an actual storage unit. Um, so I thought it would be worth talking to. I mean, if I bought a lot, wanted to do something a little unique, if you had a size, you know, talk about the size of them, how many of them you could have a minimum of. <coughs> I mean, I, I'm sure I can put one up and be happy living in it now nowadays. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it wouldn't look real pretty, so why? Uh, you know. Well, let's not talk about where you live now, which is pretty unique. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can go small. <laughs> Down is the there a company that's doing this? No, or? no, it was just oh, somebody just, brought it to the table. Somebody to asked. Well, the couple of cars together. Oh, I don't know the story, but okay. is it worth talking about? Sure, it's worth okay. talking about, and and seeing the 
But I'm sure everybody can figure out what I think. It's another trend across it's another the country. trend, and it's another thing that if you just automatically say no, then you know, Rochester's Rochester still. You know, just, I'm sorry, but I've been hearing that my entire life, my adult life, even when I lived out of town. Well, I don't think anybody's opposed to anything that building wise that can, looks tasteful. And it's is, is, but if it's a, you know, if the, the, if, the emails that got returned, I think I was the only one that said, absolutely, let's talk about it. <laughs> Uh-huh. We gotta think forward. <laughs> okay. So oh. anything else going on? Okay. No? Okay, any questions for Ruth? Good one, how about Fed Gill? I think you'll met March tenth and I asked Michael to give a little update. That's right. Well, I'm kind of in that position of uh, Oh there he is. Okay. <laughs> how are you doing? Good, how are you? <laughs> I'm in that position of telling you that things are moving, but there's not a whole bunch I can tell you about because uh, we're just getting in place. So what I'll start with is um, the housing study, which is probably the biggest thing right now, is uh, getting underway on Thursday. There's uh, the initial meeting, three to or uh, one to three, rather, and uh, I'll be in a better position next time that we meet to give you a lot of details on that, which I promise to do. Um, Moving on from that, um, the housing study word is out on the around the state. Um, I've already hosted uh, this past week a couple of gentlemen from Southern Indiana to uh, who took a tour through Rochester to look at the properties, uh, see what kind of apartment complexes we have. That's what they specialize in, and uh, they actually were very left very impressed with. What we have inside the community, the airport and, and housing stock and things, uh, they want to stay involved. I've had telephone conversations with uh, two other housing developers who uh, are doing the same thing. They haven't come in yet, but um, they want to keep abreast of what's going on with the studies. And I do anticipate them coming in at some point. Um, let's see what else. Um, oh. And then the last thing I'll say is that um, we have several small businesses, which is another part of what we do, um, who are expanding or starting up. And so they contact me for whatever state grants are available, whatever programs that we have to help them. And so we've been doing, doing that as well. And so um, that's about it for right now. And you're still on with us for the fourth? Oh, yeah. One? Okay. Got to wear a suit? <laughs> you know, I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, we received a letter contacted by the college real estate folks who have uh, another uh, LLC corporation where they they built the community crossing project up there out on 30, which is affordable houses and apartments um, that are market price. This is not the HUD anything. They've also done a similar project in Peru. They're interested in doing a project here in Rochester, so they've invited uh, uh, some of us from the city to go up. Michael's going to go with us. So that's that sounds very promising. I mean, they're proven. We can go and over see it over here. We can go and see it over here. Okay, uh, thanks Michael, sure. good seeing you. You know, whenever anybody sits back there with the lights off, I, I just never know who's back there. <laughs> that's why I sit back here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what got Lincoln too, you know. <laughs> okay, uh, park board, Robert. Hey, they, they had an election of officers that evening. Uh, presidents, Kay Nixon Davis. Vice President Mitch Hay, Secretaries Alex Berlin, and they discussed uh, uh, possibly purchasing another piece of playground equipment, or you challenged them to do that, and uh, or look into some pieces. And uh, they're also pools coming along, and uh, as I understand, it, they're looking at various grant opportunities. I think they first one maybe did go was kind of a dry run, but they're looking into the DNR five-year plan, I think I guess you got to come up with a five-year plan for the DNR grant. Yeah. yeah, the 
pool is, uh, as you know, that's a huge undertaking. <coughs> a 50 year old pool. And I decided to do it a piece at a time, which they were able to do and continue to operate the pool. I think the big filtering system has gone in now, which was, oh my gosh, that thing was antiquated. So, any questions for Bob? Any questions for Mitch? We've got a park board member sitting right here in the front row. <laughs> you hit it on the head, but we spent a lot of money on it. Yeah, but you know, uh, we had 5,000 kids go through that pool last night. Yeah. <clears throat> And the golf course, you know, we'll be okay with the golf course. Yeah. City yeah, Park, we've got, we got a lot of stuff to do out there. When are the carts going to be here? Is it, do we have to wait till the end of the year? Is that Toward the end of the week here, from what uh, Lee said. So. got to wait till the main ordinance. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are going to stay on the golf course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, no, it's been almost a year they've been on order, though. This was the COVID deal, you know? The new golf cart's been wait two years. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Well, Mitch, uh, thank you for your service on the park board. You guys do good work. Any questions for Robert? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I'm back and forth. Bob that was Robert. between him and I. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Um, Marty's not here for the BCA and Council on Aging. Uh, solid waste and animal adoption. Uh, Councilman Wilson. Yeah, Animal Adoption Center actually moved their meeting to next week, so I won't have anything until next meeting for them. And solid waste, I was not able to. Uh, tree board and EMS, uh, Councilman Fitzwater. Tree board, Wednesday, <coughs> March 1st, the seats are still warm from the night before. We had a 9 a.m. meeting here. <laughs> right yeah, I guess that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> uh, under the old business, the status of the uh, work order from last year, uh, following up on things that have mostly done, but things that have to get finished yet. Uh, they're looking for clarification on jurisdiction for where we can put trees in the right-of-way on Main Street and 9th Street in <coughs> because they have setbacks and everything else so the last thing we want to do is put a tree in and have to take it out they are along those lines they're looking for the in the once everything is ready to go looking for places for new tree installations whether it was where the previous tree was or a proper placement for a new tree you don't want to put a big, uh, something that's going to be really big in a five foot wide space. So, whatever's appropriate for the location. Uh, because they, they bid out the contracts for their removals and pruning, uh, they've got two new uh, possibilities for new service, additional services. So, hopefully, they'll keep the, the, the cost down and in line. Uh, looking at the uh, Arbor Day event, what we're going to do this year. And then the next meeting is April 5th, 9 a.m. And that's, uh, those folks are doing good work. The volunteer citizen board, they're working in the inventory, computer inventory to make sure we're keeping on top of trees, how they were rated and such. There was a lot of discussion on that as well. John Bowers is doing just great stuff. Yeah. They all are. Yes, they certainly are. Any uh, questions for Councilman Fitzwater? EMS? Anything? I think we already had the EMS update. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Okay. And the uh, dispatch center has been moved out to the, the jail. Correct. So they were probably able to, uh, with the help of uh, Mr. Elliott, the state, and uh, Rudy Yakim, I think, to help to get things moving. Did they carry furniture? Or? Uh, they, they, they carried the water. Well, that, <laughs> they, they helped get things done. Uh, they were saying the reports that some other places are waiting two years to get their equipment transferred over. And so, uh, I don't know if they called any favors or not, but they, they got it done. 
So things are moved out there now. <coughs> we uh, we ran into things like that to waste treatment of mine too. And when you impose contract penalties, yeah. it's amazing what can happen. Yeah, totally yeah. Up. yeah. Um, Chief, yesterday was the move, wasn't it? Today. 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 Okay. Today. Yeah, I just got a text about 20 minutes ago. It said they just got things finished and they're up and running. Yeah. Good. Good. Repeaters are all up. Good. Good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, water board, John. Yes, I uh, missed the last water board meeting. I was on vacation. But I saw from my notes that I received from the water board that there was no new business, no old business. Everything is, I'm sure, running wonderfully at the water department, uh, as it has been. Derek's been doing a great job with it. And overseas, I see it was a what, 10 minute meeting, so I'm sure it went pretty good. Went pretty good. Yes. Yeah. Um, we are in the process of uh, looking for a site. Well, yeah, for well, but we've discussed that at yeah. the last meeting. At the last yeah. meeting. Yeah. And uh, we're, getting, we're getting close yeah. on that situation. Um, Derek was not on vacation. No. Yeah. <laughs> so, he's going to be watching golf somewhere pretty soon. Yes. Oh, yeah. He's going to the Masters. Um, any uh, legal issues? I do not have anything to bring to the council this year. Any ADA concerns you're aware of, Shot? No, sir. Okay. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Sorry, Todd, you're a little slow.